Okay, hello again. Hopefully, there's some sound on this video today. We won't have the uh, rookie error must have made yesterday. Today's lesson is going to be super quick. I hope. And it's on comparing box plots. So, we want to be able, the whole point of doing data analysis is to reach some kind of conclusion. So we're drawing these charts. What are we going to use them for? We want to find out what the data tells us. And in particular, the strength of box plots is to make comparisons. If you've got two groups and you want to see how one group compares to another, or you want to see how a subset a smaller population compares to the whole population. So, for example, here I've got two box plots. And you'll notice I haven't put any data, any numbers on my axis here. Obviously, you would do that if you were drawing a box plot. But I want to just emphasize that really it's the shape of the box and the whiskers, and in particular the box, that tells us the differences and the actual numbers are not really important. So for that reason, I haven't put any numbers on my axis because I don't want to get bogged down in them. But let's suppose that this, these two bar charts show the test results for two year eight classes in maths. And we'll call them 8x and 8y. So when I make a comparison between 8x and 8y, there's two things I really want to compare. The most important things are the average. What can I say about them on average? And the spread. So you know three different averages, the mean mode and the median. But obviously, if it's box plots, then we're talking about the median. And you also know a measure of spread. How spread out is the data? And in the past, you would have used the range. But the range isn't really a very good measure of spread. Because let's suppose there was one kid in this class, one pupil, who did really well on the test. That would change the range a lot. That would change the range. So the whisker was that long, but it's only been affected by this one kid. So the range is not a good measure of spread, because it can be affected by one or two outliers. So instead, we're going to measure, use our measure of spread as the interquartile range. That's inter quartile range. That's the range between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Well, and you can see that visually because the upper quartile is there or there and the lower quartile is there on the top box on a axis box or there. So the interquartile range is just the width of the box. So I'm going, to try, I'm going to compare these two distributions. I'm going to compare the averages, compare their spread, write two sentences, and that's how I want you to do it when you're making comparisons in the class tomorrow. This page. So what can I say first about on average? Well, actually, on average, if we look at the averages, the medians there and there, the median is about the same for the two classes. On average, 
8x and 8y scored the same. However, probably shouldn't start with a sentence with however, should I? Mrs. Reed will be livid. The spread of marks in 8y is much larger So there's much more variation in the pupils in 8y than there are the pupils in 8x. So that's the two things you always want to comment on. Keep an eye out because very, very occasionally a question like this might, might be looking for three things. And obviously the third thing, maybe not obviously, is to comment on the range in some way. But... It's important you understand that the caveat that the range is a very, very easy, easily changeable. There's a lot of things that can change in the range. In this example, the ranges are about, without measuring it, rudimentary measure. They're, in fact, they're more, more or less identical, aren't they? Look at that. The ranges are pretty similar. So we might, we, if we were faced with a situation where we had to write three things, that would be the third thing we wrote. Possibly. There's a, another thing going on here. What kind of time are we on? Seven minutes. I'm going to leave it there. There is another thing you, would, you might comment on, which is skew. So I'm just going to point out that you'll notice the median here is much closer to the left of the bar than it is to the right, whereas the median here is, is closer to the middle, more or less. So sometimes you might want to comment on the skew of the data as well. That's not something we're really going to talk about this year. Just something for you to be aware of. Okay, I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.